Welcome to an episode of With Sonar. This is our Carrier Summit Edition. Thank you so much for tuning in to day one of day two uh, of the Carrier Summit. Um, and of course, I'm joined by my co-host, Kyle Taylor. Kyle, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, doing very well. If we, uh, if we weren't branding everything today, we are officially branded today. <laughs> Unlike all of the stuff in the swag store, these are limited edition. But these are limited editions. Well, actually, these are the only edition. <laughs> because <laughs> two of two. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, so, so yeah. no, but I'm, I'm glad to be here. It's, very, uh, it's a great time to always be a part of the conferences and the, the online conferences. I do miss being in our, uh, our FreightWaves live events, but uh, I'm glad we could at least do it here and at least be virtually in the conference. So. Yeah, no, we, we were here about, about a month ago with the 3PL Summit, and I think that went really, really well. We had some, some really good feedback, and it was great to interact with a lot of the thought leaders here. And now we're with the Carrier Summit. Have you seen any highlights at all going on or things you're looking forward to that haven't happened yet? Yeah, no, I, I really like some of the, the, I mean, we have more people that have their virtual, I guess, or virtual uh, uh, booths now. So yeah. last time we only had virtual two. Virtual booth looks great, by the way. Yeah, we only had two last time. So Shout out to the, to the folks that made the virtual booth. It was, it was fantastic. Yeah, just shout out to all of the media team in general because yes. how this is all set not up. Us. Yeah, not us. Not us, we just, we just show up and, and smile and act happy. And, but these guys behind the cameras are really what's putting this on. Yeah. And you know, those events and, and future events are, what, are yeah. what this is all about. And behind the microphone too. But yes, so we're actually, um, I know we don't have a ton of time, but we, we've seen a couple of commercials so far, or a couple of highlights of, of the new 7.0 releases in Sonar that happened about a month ago. And it, we're, we're gonna take a look at some of those today because I think it's gonna be really, really interesting, especially as we get into uh, bid season coming up. And, and especially as, as bid, mini bids are, are becoming a little more prevalent. I think this tool, uh, or one of the features of the, of the update will be, be very impactful for that for that time period. But before we get to, to the tool, which is called uh, Lane Scorecard, I mean, what, what are going on with freight volumes right now? Just up yeah. and to the right. Up and to the right. I wish yeah, that. We can throw, throw it up on the screen Might for as folks well to be able to see. But yeah, I, mean, I wish not, that right? was and my I'll, stock portfolio right I'll now. I'll throw up, up the, the last right. two years for comparison there. So you see that blue line? That blue line is year to date truckload volume level. And then the, the lines below that, the two green lines below that are 2018 and 2019 volume level. So we're we're a cool like 40 some odd percent above where we were this time last year. Right. No, that's, that's what? really unheard of. <laughs> and, and, and so for those of you that haven't, haven't joined with Sonar before, um, and maybe this is their first time watching, uh, really we're just gonna crack into some Sonar charts and really kind of keep it simple and, and, yeah. and show you how you can utilize this to you know, better perform, identify risk. And, and you know, that's really been the talk about the, this entire conference is really how do we mitigate risk, whether it's through driver recruitment or just decision making. So, sure. you know, seeing this, you know, shows more optionality. That's what it shows me. If you're exposed to these uh, consumer packaged goods, what's really uh, driving. So those those uh, grocery store goods and, and now that we have a, a lot more places opening up, what we're seeing is more volumes coming. And so what that really says in my eyes and, and be sure guys to comment below if this is what you're seeing as well. More optionality means I can pick really what lanes I want to I I run and be the most efficient. Yep. And, and that means I can get rid of some wasteful, maybe unprofitable lanes so that I can keep my truck running in a more profitable fashion down into the year. I mean, yep. even US Express was talking about uh, an additional four to six quarters of, of positive growth in the trucking industry. So, I mean, being able to see this on a daily basis, being what Luke just showed you uh, on, on the map or on the chart, really just screams optimism in my eyes. Absolutely, yeah, and, and that's just a national average uh, uh, index for, for folks to be able to look at. And of course, you know, we'll, we'll dive in more to that and how we can use it on a lane by lane basis with a million other data sets that we have. But uh, first, yeah, if you do have questions or want us to look at something specific or a specific market, uh, go to the Freight Waves with Sonar Slack channel. Uh, Kyle's gonna be monitoring that for you. That's FW dash with Sonar. Um, and you can, we, we'll just have any sort of uh, communication there with you, and we're happy to interact. Um, but yeah, this is, this is really unprecedented. It's, we're gonna definitely tighten up capacity, but I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. It definitely gives carriers optionality um, to be able to, to interact with the market. And something else that, that's, really, that's really impactful. So that's the volume. Now I'm just gonna flip to, and we can keep this on the screen for folks to be able to see. I'll do a quick little year-to-date option here. So this chart right here is the tender rejection percentage 
up that number the right. in the top right is a little over 23 percent that is daily tender rejection rates in the united states right. on that volume so essentially we're sitting at 23 percent tender rejection rates right now um that's a lot yeah i mean, I mean that's gonna hurt that hurts shippers a lot but it, it should help carriers quite a bit yeah um no i mean when you're I mean, what do you do when you're budgeting your, your lanes over time? What are you trying to identify? You're trying to see where I can capitalize the most with the assets I have. And so if I only have 50, 50 trucks and, you know, I'm, and I have these uh, contracted lanes that we're working with, you know, when are the times that maybe I can go outside of those and be strategic about rejecting yep. my freight to go to the spot market? And really what we're seeing right now is, is even more. And then even further is that how can maybe I keep the lanes that I have and instead of what I normally do on the spot loads that I have, or those those you know day of loads, or the uh, the team trucks that I have, you can you can really just go and position them better with your customers because it seems like really the flavor of the industry is that more freight's coming out of the the same shippers. So yeah, no, absolutely right, it, it, and I think you hit the nail on the head there, right? It's it's a combination of, of knowing there's options, but also kind of when to take advantage of them, when they're going to be financially beneficial for you to take those and how you can be strategic about it. If you're, let's say, like we've, we've gotten a lot of new updates at Sonar, but we only have time to really look at one of them. What is, you know, as we transition into Lane Scorecard, you know, how do you, you know, what, what how do you, how do you digest this information? If you've got a thousand lanes that you've run, what do you, you know, what are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, in the trucking industry, risk is the number one uh, you know, identifier of what we're trying to do. So we're trying to mitigate whether it's, you know, how do I keep my, tr my drivers in my truck? What is the risk of me losing my drivers? What's the risk of me losing this customer? What is the risk of having an empty mile here? What is, you know, we're all about risk. And so what, what Lane Scorecard does for you is gives you a really easy way to apply our logic that our, our customers are using, which is, how do we identify where risk is on a pricing metric? So, yep. you know, on a lane level, how is how is price really moved over time? And then additionally, how can we score that to see which, based on market conditions, what is the score of that lane? How attractive is that lane for a carrier? And because our predictive rates really puts in the the carrier aspect or the cost aspect of of um, you know the operational cost of of ownership or to run a lane, this is the perfect tool for that because you can really use it to see how things are changing and then identify how risky it is for you to take this lane. And we talked about optionality. So if I have a thousand lane bid, what do I want to do? I want to cherry pick. Yeah. Guilty. All right. <laughs> like I want to cherry pick. I want to, I want to make the most amount of money and keep and set me up in the right market. Well, there's nothing wrong with that because every, everyone's network is a little bit different, right? right? And, and carriers know their own network very well. They do. Where, where Sonar provides that context is what's going on in the market, right? We, mm -hmm. we have the most market data of any player on the market. So you, you can basically combine that with, okay, here's where I run. Here's my operation. Right. What's going on around me? What's the market doing? And, and can I take advantage of that, those changes and that volatility? Right? How exposed am I? Maybe I want to be more exposed or less exposed, depending on how it's going to play out. Um, to, to show a quick little demo here of yeah. one of the new features. Before uh, you jump in there, we actually had uh, oh, We have a question. Pat, Sorry. We had Pat, Pat. Uh, on, on, the, on the Slack channel was asking about the Omaha market. The Omaha market. Yeah, he's like, what is going on in, the, in that Omaha market? And I just looked it up on our, our volatility widget. Yeah. It looks like, let's see. Green across the board. Green so across if the you're, board. So if you're familiar with Sonar, green means money. It means increased volumes, increased rejection, increased head haul. So what has happened in Omaha, which makes about unless a half you're a shipper. percent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> unless you're a shipper. Omaha makes up about a half a percent of market share in the United States, so about half a percent of that entire pie. And, and so what we've seen over the past seven days is that a 15% increase in outbound volumes. That is then translated to an increase in three and a half percent of tender rejections. So rejection rates are right at about 25 percent. So what's that saying is uh, about you know a quarter out of a hundred are are being rejected. Why would you say all of that when we could just show it? Listen, I like to talk. I'm sorry. You know, I get I get fired up about some of this stuff. So <laughs> no, seriously, well, everything Kyle said is correct. Um, I'm not good with words, so let's just throw it on the screen. Boom, there it is. That's and literally everything compare, Kyle what, said. What do you have up there? 
What? That's tender rejection out of Omaha. Yeah, compare it with the tender volumes as well. All right. Because we're cool. seeing really both like across it. the like board. I like it. I like it. Okay. Because my favorite, my favorite rule of thumb is that uh, you can't just look at one thumb. You got to look at two. Right. It helps when you have two, too. Um, great. So here we go. Okay. So uh, we'll look, throw a volume. There it is. We're going to put volume in orange. Okay, so let, let's, let me explain here. So the, the orange line is volume. That's the amount of volume that's shipping out of Omaha on a daily basis. This is year to date. Okay, so this is as of this morning. So a big volume surge, it looks like in March. Then we plummeted down, hit a bottom around there in May, or maybe we kind of dipped there yet, yeah, kind of late May. And we started rising, a couple of dips. Very volatile, just a lot of ups and downs out of, out of Omaha. Yeah. It looks like we're starting to rise up pretty heavily here over the last few weeks. Tender rejections are in blue year to date. They bottomed out in late April, early May, it looks like. Yeah, so sitting at about so right 4%. about that time was when, you know, drivers were making all time lows in rate per yeah. miles. You know, Very so if low. you're not familiar with our tender rejection index, it's a really good proxy and forward looking indicator to what spot market rate per mile is gonna do. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean as tender rejections go up, shippers are then forced to put more freight on the spot market because their routing guide falls apart. Mm -hmm. And as more freight hits the spot market in order to make it more attractive for your carrier base to pick up, you gotta throw a few more cents and sometimes another dollar on top. Yeah, um, spot on. So, but yeah, and then that blue line we just see is up and to the right there, sitting at about 25%. That's almost a year to date high. Um, so very, very, very elevated. Yeah. Very good, And good then question. Keisha on, uh, on the general thread asked how 3PLs can use sonar. Fantastic. I, so, know, I know we're focused on carriers today, so we'll try yeah. to just squeeze that Well, no, this is good in. because a lot of the asset-based carriers here today also have brokerages, so this is valuable. So brokerages, brokerages are in a unique position, right? They, um, they it, depending on your situation, if you're, if you're a brokerage that focuses or that has a lot of contract-based business, you're going to have a big difference in how you use Sonar if, you're, if you move more contracted freight versus more spot freight. If it's contracted freight, you can really use it as a planning tool to understand where you're exposed. Because the biggest thing with brokers is they have to understand what type of capacity they're going to have to work with, as well as price volatility on a lane. And that's where the lane scorecard system can go into place because it tells them and it'll help them plan for the future and forecast those types of metrics. What right. capacity am I going to have to work with? Is it going to be easy for me to cover my freight? Right. Or am I going to be you know, knocking on everybody's door to pick up a load? And at right? the end of the day, for brokers, I mean, historically, brokers capitalize on inefficiencies in the market. Yep. That's how they make money. You know, everything being equal, then all of a sudden capacity gets tight. I tell you, you know, capacity is getting tight and I can still keep my rate per mile, you know, or my cost that I have, which is the cost for the, to the truck. And so if I can really maximize the, the, the difference between those, that's how I make money. That's the key. Yeah. That's why the brokerages are alive. Um, and, and so there's definitely a lot of different tools that we can use this, but really all the data through the same lens can really portray three different things. Yeah. Because shippers can use this, brokers can use this, carriers can use this, and, and, it's, and it all answers their questions. It's the same thing, right? You know, it's just like it's just like buying a stock. Do you buy a stock after the news, the positive news is out, or would you like to have the stock before the positive news is out? Same idea, right? If we can make those decisions as soon as the market changes, or even right before the market changes, right. you're going to be in a good position. If I'm a broker, maybe it's to increase my price to the shipper, or lower the lower the price to the carrier, depending on how the market changes. If it's a carrier, maybe it's knowing when to reject a load to then ask for more on the spot market. If it's a shipper, you know when or how to adjust where I where I send my volume. Maybe I ship out of this distribution center today versus this one. Um, but what all this is really good because you know there's you know, we have a lane analysis tool, lane scorecard, and it does a lot of this information. It does a lot of that for you. So if we can share, uh, go ahead and pop this up real quick. What I'm going to do, just give you a brief example on the screen. So all you do, I'm uploading like four or five dummy lanes here. I'm just going to click upload. Yeah, but it's a zip to zip. So all you need yeah, zip is to origin and yeah, destination Yeah, what's your origin zip, zip code, code, destination zip code. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit to help folks uh, be able to see a little bit better. There we go. Um, so here we go. Kyle, you've been looking at this a lot. Kind of give I us love it. give us a breakdown. You know, what are what are oh. some of your favorite indicators here? Because there's a lot on the screen. What can what can we hone in on? I mean, high le high level, let's I mean, we'll get kind of into the details, but what can this platform do? So what this can do is you're testing out new markets to get into. Yeah. How do I know what whether or not that market's good or bad for my network? This can solve that problem. You're trying to Or even current ones with how volatile it's right? been. <laughs> Let me look at my current 
my current customer base and see you know, what is vol volatile and where do I have the most risk and does that line up with my own internal conversations that I'm having. Secondary, we have new business and that's where this really does, uh, does wonders is because we all know how, how strenuous that RFP process is. We've got mini bids coming yeah. out. Oh. Everyone's gonna be re reshuffling their lanes here coming up if we see any kind of downward progression. And so what this does is it shows you, based off the, the, um, the number you select, so the time date, so it's one, three, six, nine, 12 months. Yep. It'll tell you how our predictive rates have done, how they've moved in the past. So we're looking at 12 months, right? So tw from now and then looking back 12 months, how have rates changed? Right, so in this top example, we're, we're looking at Palatine, Illinois to North Metro Georgia. So essentially Chicago to Atlanta, right? right? And so we've seen what this first number represents. We've got this filtered to a 12 month time frame. So if we go back 12 months from today, since I just uploaded it, yep. we're, we've seen a 64% increase in pricing on this lane from 12 months ago. Correct. That next number is the predicted change. We're expecting to see, we are predicting a 37% decline in pricing. Now that might seem really drastic, but remember that 30% decline year over year looking forward is based off of an already you know 65% increase. So you're still, right still elevate it when you look out that much. And keep in mind that is a forecast. That number may change as market data continues to update. We will update those numbers. Um, you've got distance, you've got driving durations. In this case, we're looking at drive-in. Um, and then you kind of get into the volatility score. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so the, the, really the next two are probably the most impactful data sets that we have within Sonar. This is you know, how a lot of our more API driven customers are utilizing this to identify volatility and score lanes. And so what that volatility score is, it, it, it's, a, it's a benchmark and identifies how the rates have changed over time given that window. Right. And then the, the lane score is honestly my favorite new data set within I Sonar. Love that. That, is, that is the end all be all in my opinion because it puts in multiple data sets to, to set up that score. And so what it does, it tells you how attractive that lane is for a carrier. So is that a very backhaul centric lane? Is that an easy lane to cover? Is that a hard lane to cover? Now this is, this is a scale from one to 36. So what Correct. does it mean if you're closer to one versus closer to 36? Great question. So closer to one is gonna tell you it's, it's easier to cover. These are, you know. Potentially less attractive for a carrier. Uh, yes, so these are gonna be like your Washington, your Seattle's to like LA's. These are gonna be, yeah. you know, things that you have no issues. Those, those red markets, if you're familiar with our head haul index on a map. Um, so those have a lot of inbound freight. And then going to the other side is gonna be extremely volatile. So it's gonna tell you that you're maybe in a good market taking you to a bad market. It's not good for a carrier. You don't have a lot of option optionality at that destination market. So that's really what, what goes into it, that yeah. volume, rejection, haul, market share. All four of those go in to make that score. So we, we can effectively sum this up as you're, you're looking at, at, at really um, three key metrics. I know we haven't talked about everything here because we are, we are towards the end of time, but basically you're looking at price change. So, so volatility, how volatile is the price going to be on whatever time sequence we're looking at? If we change the time frame and we want to look at just the next three minutes, the numbers are going to change. And then the next is capacity. What type of capacity could we expect on this lane? Is our truck valuable or less valuable? Right. And then what's the predicted change of pricing? Here's where price is today, but where are we forecasting pricing to go next? Boom. You don't like working in, in Sonar, you can export this to an Excel document and put it in your own pricing guide. Awesome. What else do you need? Love to Probably see it. what you need is this <laughs> sweet what the truck hat. If you if you like Where could I pick one of those up? This one you can't pick it up. It's actually sorry, it's you can't buy it. But you can get a What the Truck 2019 t shirt. You can get <laughs> a lot of swag on our swag. You can get some freightways golf balls. You might be able to things. get a Peloton. Who knows? You might be able to get a Peloton, <laughs> just register. <laughs> so fantastic. No, this is this is a pleasure. Kyle, I know we're 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 about at the end of the time here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys as well for listening. We've got a lot more going on on the calendar for the rest of today as well as tomorrow on the Carrier Summit. So be sure to tune in. If you have additional questions, leave them in the Slack channel below and have a fantastic rest of your day.